Hi, uh, my name's Stuart Cox. Uh, I'm uh, uh, an abstract and, and portrait uh, painter artist uh, from Northampton in England, which is about sort of 50 miles north of London. I suppose starting my art, I mean, my first exposure to art was a long time ago in my grandma's um, living room. She had a print of The Laughing Cavalier by Franz Howells, and that kind of stuck in my mind. Uh, and it's been great in recent years to be able to go and see that in the Wallace Collection in London. And, and really, I guess my, my uh, continued through, and I only really started my art about five years ago, it was really uh, the abstract, my abstract art was a way of trying to express, I've had uh, some pretty serious mental illness issues. And these started about 10 years ago. And um, 10 years ago, there was very little out there uh, information, internet information, book information about depression. Um, and so I literally thought uh, I was going mad. I couldn't get any information about how I was feeling. So I, I thought, well, I, I've got to express myself about how I feel and how my brain is feeling at the moment. So I decided to to express that through through art. So I bought myself some very cheap acrylic paints and some cheap canvas um and um and started to just paint kind of what i was feeling inside all these funny shapes and question marks and cups half full and cups half empty and started to to really enjoy it and really enjoy the colors that were there and and the shapes i was producing um and so developed my abstract art on from there and tried different techniques uh color field um try some drip painting some drag painting some flow and pour painting just to see what the different effects were and how the colors worked with each other um and then i guess really as my health started to improve a little bit um i thought well let's look at another challenge uh and that challenge was painting figuratively um uh going on to 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 painting portraits from from photographs and, and, and different pictures um, and just kind of develop that way and, and that's where I am at the moment and I guess I'm probably a little bit more of a portrait painter now than an abstract painter. So you are using art to express your emotions? Uh, yeah, a, a hundred percent. It was it was quite a, a, a vital important thing for me actually as a way of kind of getting uh out what i was feeling it was it was it was difficult to talk to people about it and to be fair it still is uh sometimes um but i am much much better at expressing verbally how i feel now um but at the time it was a it was a great way of just getting some of these thoughts out and um and people uh people looking at the paintings and and hopefully beginning to try and understand a little bit about how i was feeling at the time I was looking at your abstract painting earlier and they were very nice organized, a lot of geometric shapes. You wouldn't say that, you know, something chaotic was going on in your life. I guess, uh, I guess, I guess one of my, uh, one of the, the, the symptoms, a symptom or, or, a, or a, a, a personality feature for me growing up was being a bit of a perfectionist and when you're doing uh chaotic abstract art as you've described it there um straight lines uh, uh sharp corners all those sorts of things kind of didn't come into it so doing a bit of abstract was kind of fighting against my natural wants of, of being as perfect as possible and as sharp and as crisp as possible, but having this little bit of chaos as well. So I think both things were kind of fighting against one another in my paintings. And that's why, you know, some of them are a little chaotic, but a lot of them do have these, like you say, these shapes and things in them that are more regular. Also, your palette um, is very rich, very vivid, very bright. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I mean, one of the, the it's, uh, thinking back to the days when I was really ill, one of the medications I tried um, kind of gave me um, these these incredibly uh, um, vivid, uh, multicolored dreams. 
<laughs> really strange that I'd get these flashes, these really bright flashes of colour, no particular shape to them, but these really bright flashes of colour in dreams. And I guess, um, you know, what, what I tried to do in the early days was kind of get those sort of feelings out as well, I, I guess, onto the canvas. And that's why um, my palette, um, certainly, uh, certainly then, and to a certain extent now, um, you know, d does involve does involve bright colours. Although, having said that, um, uh, I, I am a fan of black and white and grey. I do think that they go well together, and they're probably three of the well, certainly black and grey are two of the, the dullest colours you can get. So, you know, there is a little bit of a mix there, but that, I think that's the reason why things are things are bright and out there so, i mean going back to these dreams again because because they were such they were like blocks of color that were appearing the colors weren't kind of all mixed together they were blocks of very vivid color um and so uh that's why i mean there are some works you may have seen in my in my abstract work that are just literally with blocks of color all pushed together um you know but 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 again quite uniform trying to there i am trying to sort of battle with the colors but battle with trying to get in uh, away from being a perfectionist but being dragged back into being a perfectionist and kind of plotting the colors but in very very uh uniformed um geometric shapes um because you know i can't seem to get myself out of that wanting things to be quite correct and sharp and straight Behind you, you have three paintings. Is this a triptych? Yeah, it's a it's a triptych. I, I've I've had a, a I say a little bit of a break from a portrait painting just recently. I sort of haven't done any portrait work now for probably about six weeks, um, and I haven't done a, a lot of painting either. Um, just having a bit of a break. I've been visiting galleries, trying to get a bit of inspiration. Um, so this, yeah, this this triptych was. Um, something that uh, I, I finished ooh, or I very nearly finished anyway um uh I started earlier on in the week it was just really a way of of me getting a bit of paint back on the canvas again uh and a bit of a start point for me again to to um to move forward so so yeah i i, I guess you know it's just one of my um uh the the the, the, the red and the ochre i've called it red um life in red and ochre um and the red and the ochre are kind of the, the the our life just going through ups and downs as it does and then the black twirls are the different things that happen to us during a day and a lot of them just don't have any substance but then again you'll you'll meet one and the colored ones on there you've got a, a blue one which means something happens to us in the day which is not great a green one something happens to us in the day that's really good and then uh, uh, a, a yellow one is something that happens to us that, you know, kind of routinely happens that's important in our life. Um, I, I, and I guess that's kind of a little bit of a throwback as to um, my thoughts about um, my, my illness and when I was going through my illness and how your mind um, looks at things in every possible way you can um, in all order to try and feel better um uh, you explore every avenue you know lots of avenues in therapy in uh, in uh, medication um and in um uh, trying to use things like meditation and all those sorts of things um and you do tend to start to think quite deeply about life and and, and that's that's something that i that i do and i do naturally and i kind of quite enjoy doing um, and but that sort of comes forward in my art, I think, as well, in the fact that that occasionally I'll I'll paint a picture that won't have any particular meaning, but most of them will be kind of a bit of a homage, a bit of a, a, a reflection on something that I've been through in my life or something about life. Um, so I always think it keeps the paintings a little bit more substance. And I always think it's much better to be able to, as an artist, explain a painting to somebody who's looking at it. Um, uh, and it just gives a little bit more depth and a little bit more meaning to it, in my opinion. How was the pandemic for you? I, uh, I, I, 
actually um, being a, an artist isn't my only job. I'm also audiologist, an audiologist as well. Um, so um, during the pandemic, I was furloughed, which is I don't know whether you're, you you know what that means, but in Britain it was you were off work and you were still being paid for your work. So it, I kind of viewed it as a little bit of a career break from audiology. Um, and um, I, I have to say, I loved it. Um, it was, uh, you were being told to stay at home. Um, I'm not a massively social type of person, so I didn't really miss out too much on the social interaction with people. And we've got things like Zoom and Microsoft Teams anyway, so you could stay in touch with the people that you wanted to stay in touch with. But it gave me um, a bit of a chance to, to read, and I am a massive, massive uh, fan of art history. I absolutely love it and it's something that's again I think alongside my painting has kind of saved me in a way in the last 10 years because it's given me that interest um, to, to, to read and explore and for, I mean for instance reading as I started to about abstract painting um, just really about the abstract, uh, abstract expressionists in, in uh, in America in the, the 40s and 50s um, and reading back on them and, and having the kind of the, the thought pattern that the, the abstract art was very, very modern art and, and modern art thinking um, this, you know, abstract art has been done in the 1990s and 2000s being very, very modern. Uh, and then starting to realise that a lot of these paintings from people like Rothko and, 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 and Pollock and Clifford Steele were done back in the, you know, the, the 40s and the 50s all the way through. And then and then digging further and going back to people like Mondrian and Kandinsky and on all of those sorts of people who have, have started doing this sort of painting back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, kind of blew my mind. And that and that. It, it gave me the interest to explore um, uh, more about abstract painting, but then getting on, of course, to the rich history of, of, of uh, figurative painting, Renaissance painting, um, painting of in the, 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 the uh, areas such as the Netherlands and Belgium, um, and then, of course, onto the French and onto um, uh, impressionism um, and discovering wonderful painters like Manet and Degas and more about those so it, that's that for me has been something that I really have enjoyed and and, and I used I believe um, lockdown time for me in the best way I possibly could and it was kind of a a bit of a soother I think to my mental health as well it gave me time to step away um, after being told I had to step away um, and, and spending that time and filling that time up with things that I wanted to do, I did find it quite therapeutic. You are mostly doing women. Uh, you did one self-portrait and the rest are women, most of them. And uh, they are very sculptural. Yeah, I, I guess they are. Um, I, I, I've kind of... Uh, again, I, I think I'm trying to sort of find or develop my own style of of um, figurative work, um, and I think again I'm I'm trying to step away from making them um, too perfect and too much like a photograph. Uh, I, I mean, in my opinion on on art like that. Um, portraits that almost look like a photograph don't get me wrong incredibly skillful but to me art is your own interpretation uh on a particular uh situation a particular person so i think um a couple of people who viewed my um figurative work my portrait work have said that they're almost like pop art in the way that some of the, the the shadows are put on the skin and put on the, the people for uh, behind and the clothing and i quite like that and, and i guess that's so that's what I'm, I'm i'm trying to do they are quite statuesque but 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 I, I don't know i just want them to stand out and a lot of them are painted against uh 
a neutral coloured background or a single colour background again to try and bring them forward a little bit more um, in the painting. But but, uh, but no, so so I hadn't really thought about them being statuesque, but I guess they are. Um, but I guess again, sort of wanting to get the shape of them right. Again, that perfectionism thing coming through. Um, but it is, I, I still, I feel like I'm, I'm still developing my style, but it's kind of coming with regards to my portrait work, yeah. I think that um, I've tried to kind of um, paint skin colour relatively the same as the skin colour from the photograph or from the, you know, whatever I'm, I'm taking the, um, the influence from. Um, but I have tried to mix in a little bit of colour and made things like shadow and light a little bit more extreme on the skin than maybe it is in the original. Just again, try to, try to put my little bit of my own uh, style, I guess, onto, onto what I'm painting. You seem to be quite at ease uh, portraying the um, women's bodies. I was wondering if you would feel from, uh, at ease doing male nudes. Um, I, do you know what? I haven't really ever given that any thought as to whether I would be at ease or, or not at ease. Um, I, uh, um, I, I guess I would. I guess it would be interesting uh, to do that and to work a little bit with the different shapes in a in a. Uh, in a male body um uh, yeah uh, i mean it, and it might be something that i would try um sometime in the near future but that's that's an interesting point because it's something i've never it's never really entered my head interesting i guess that um uh yeah i i, I think that that would that would perhaps be a, um that would perhaps be a nice way to go forward and and, and to have a bit of comparison and, and maybe starting with a with a male and a female in the same painting, you know, and, and then you get a direct comparison, I guess, and that would be a direct comparison on the canvas, but also a direct comparison for me in, in, in sketching and um, in, in working out and painting different form. Yeah, it's an idea going forward. As an ideologist, do you happen to associate colours to sound? I have to say, no. Um, audiology is, is, is quite scientific. Um, and um, what's, it, what's the term for um, um, art and music, sort of people getting artistic influence yes, from music? Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. That was Kandinsky. He, he, um, he was very big on that, wasn't he? Um, yeah, I, I uh, no, it, it's not something that's kind of entered my head, mixing the two up, I guess, because one's quite scientific and, and, and obviously art is, is uh, you know, mainly um, artistic. Um, it, yeah, it's not something that's ever sort of entered my head to, to, uh, to sort of feel. I mean, it's not something I'd naturally ever done. It's felt sort of, I don't know, visual through, through music. I mean, I am a massive music fan um and music is very inspirational but i don't think i've really ever sort of um felt um a piece of music um or uh, tones that are played in audiology for instance when i'm testing somebody's hearing i've never really um kind of uh blended those together with 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 my art in any way i think that the the way that i view um what I do with my uh, portrait painting is um, I will um, uh, paint the, the, the body shape as accurately as I can. And then within that, I will blend in um, kind of different colors within the skin and different colors within shadows um, than, than would be the, the realistic expected colors so um with a lot of my portrait work it, you will see that the colors are not particularly realistic the form is there but the coloring is different and, and i think that's a bit of a spillover from my 
from my abstract painting in the fact that I can't get away from some of these bright colours going in. But it, but it kind of develops, I think it develops a little bit of your style. And, and I was speaking to an um, artistic friend of mine last weekend and, and we were going through some of my, um, some of, some pictures of some of my artwork and I was saying to them, you know, ab about my, my style and, and I still think I'm uh, kind of, um, uh, not 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 struggling to find a style, but I, but I I'm, I'm I'm still kind of think I'm reaching out within my work to find a style where I think, hey, you know, that is that's me, and that's the style I'm going to base my painting around going forward. Um, I mean, I, I've you know my, my portraits, I've tried uh, um, uh, a more sketchy style, like a, like maybe a Degas or a Manet. Um, uh, and I've tried, you know, as we've talked about, I've tried a more pop arty style, a bit like Roy Lichtenstein, those sorts of things to, to try and develop something and try and find something that I do feel is comfortable as my style. And I think I'm still, I'm still searching. I'm still, still looking for that. But I feel I'm getting there. I feel I'm, I'm a little bit more sorted about now about the direction that I want to go. Are there British artists or schools of art that influenced you? Um, on the British side, um, I, uh, I visited um, Tate Britain um, ooh, uh, a couple of months ago. I'd never been to Tate Britain before, been to Tate Modern Lot, National Gallery, blah, blah, blah. I'd never been to Tate Britain before, which of course is pr primarily British, British paintings. So, um, uh, I, I, and I came across, uh, I, I believe it's called uh, Azalea Garden, the painting. It was by Patrick Heron. Um, and it was a series, uh, white background, and a series of very small um, uh, um, vertical lines all the way down in different colours to kind of look a little bit like uh, a flower garden when you step back from painting. And it was kind of a re reverse influence in a way, because uh, I think I sent you a photograph of a painting that I'd sold to a collector in, on the south coast of Britain uh, a couple of years ago. And that was kind of a similar sort of painting. Um, so it, it kind of warmed me a little bit to think that something that I'd kind of uh, not developed on my own, but something I'd attempted, a style that I'd thought about on my own, um, was something that had um, a, a very similar been thought about by uh, a relatively famous artist, you know, back in the, I think it was back in the 1920s, the 1950s, he did that painting, one of the two, but it was a long time ago. So, and, and, and then starting to read a little bit more about the, the, the group of artists who um, got together in Cornwall in, in Britain, which is right down in the sort of far southwest of England. Um, and they uh, base themselves uh, in the small town called St Ives, which has got very, very good light apparently down there. Fantastic light because it's right by the seaside or whatever. So reading a little bit about them and about how they worked and how they use light. Um, I mean, I have a very light studio. I have a big window here, which I think really kind of helps in what I'm doing and gives you a fantastic aspect on colours and a bit more true colour rather other than trying to paint under artificial light. So I think certainly that group of artists um, do influence me. Um, you know, I'm aware of, of, of people like David Hockney, um, not a, a massive fan of Hockney's work, but, but great respect to the guy because, you know, he's been at the, almost at the forefront of British art now for, for a long, long time. Um, but kind of being a bit abstract and a bit out there with some art, you know, you can appreciate some of the work that people like Tracy Emin, um, do and Damien Hurst as well. So uh, there's there's sort of all sorts of things go into the pot for me. Um, but uh, but I, I I guess you 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 only have a certain amount of time and 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 the history of art is 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 absolutely enormous. Even recent art, as you will know. So <laughs> you end up you think, oh, can I, shall I paint this weekend? Shall I read this weekend? Shall I go and visit a gallery this weekend? So you know, there's there's always something to do and so much to do. Uh, and for me, and it, and it almost feels like I'm playing catch up 
on you know 500 years of art um but uh, but i'm really i'm really thoroughly enjoying everything i'm thoroughly enjoying my painting i'm enjoying my gallery visits i'm enjoying reading i'm enjoying trying to apply some things that i see some styles of paintings that i see into my own painting i'm enjoying the timelines of painting and learning about you know the the, the years that people um yeah, were active in and how they managed to produce these unbelievable paintings uh mixing the pigment with with egg yolk and all you know all those sorts of things together it, it just fascinates me fascinates me have you tried to paint outdoors uh i have um it was a wind it was a windy day and um it, it didn't go particularly well physically not necessarily the painting but um uh it, because it was such a windy day it was difficult to control canvas and and, and whatever so um the thing is in uh, with it with english weather um it's incredibly changeable it's incredibly changeable, which is fantastic for different light conditions, for getting different light conditions, if, if that's what you want. But but you can set up, as I did on that day, I set up my easel outside and it was a, a, a windy day blowing the clouds. And so the sun was out one minute, the sun was in the next minute, giving you different shadows. So it was quite hard to find a kind of a focus which you wanted to do so but it, it gave me a real understanding or a better understanding of the way the impressionists worked and how quickly they had to work you know that they worked and how quickly they worked to try and sort of uh, get a, an idea as to the same sort of light condition so it was interesting for that reason but it's not something i've tried i've tried again uh, uh, Northampton is a uh, it's quite a large town where i live but i live on the outside and there is some beautiful countryside north of Northampton, uh, rolling, rolling countryside. Uh, I mean, it, uh, in, in my opinion, Britain has some of the most fantastic countryside in the world. Um, and, and I guess, um, I, I don't know whether you're leading to a question about um, landscape painting here, um, but I, I, it's something I've never tried. Um, uh, it, it, uh, and it's something I've never really had an inclination to try. But then again, if I look back three or four years, I didn't think I would ever try portrait painting. Uh, and it's something that I've really enjoyed. So, um, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe in the future, if that was going to be your next question. I think that born, born out, I mean, going back again, um, sort of 10 years, I was in a fight to control the way that I was feeling mentally. Um, it was incredibly tiring um, living in that way. And, and you kind of develop your own ways of controlling how you feel and keeping your head above water. And so I, I, I think that maybe that mindset um, has gone into to a lot of my abstract art with the fact that the freeness is there but um you know having been through a um a portion of my life where i am desperately battling to um uh to to keep things under control i think that that influence is still there in the art that i do plus as we've talked about before a little bit of this perfectionist a little bit about this wanting straight lines and, you know, blah 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 whatever yeah let's talk about the medium acrylics how did you decide that acrylics and not watercolor or oils but acrylics are your medium um i think from uh, beginning and, and and as i mentioned before when i first started just to try and get some thoughts out on uh, on the canvas it was buying um uh some ch some cheap canvas and then uh some cheap paints which happened to be acrylic and then just reading a little bit about the fact that you know with acrylics um you know they're fast drying um and it meant that i was able to produce multi-colors um a little bit more easily and effectively than i would have done with with oil 
uh, and then realizing with acrylics they were pretty free flowing you could mix them with with water you know and, and get different sort of shades and they were very difficult to blend them together but very difficult to mix sorry very easy to mix them together to get um to get different shades um and i worked with them and i, and I never really um worked with any oils or had any inclination to work with any oils until I visited uh, an art friend of mine who I've known for a long time um, and she um, has always painted in oils um, she paints domestic scenes um, still life that sort of thing um, and watching her work and watching her work with the oil paint um, I bought myself some oils and um, one of the first portraits I did um, was in oils and um, I have to say I painted it like I would like I paint in the same sort of uh, uh, way which I paint acrylics um, and I, I have to say because of the colours that I tend to use it, uh, I didn't find it um, I didn't find it any different than painting with acrylics. The only thing that's frustrating about painting with oils, as we all know, is it takes such a long time to dry. So, you, you know, you, 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 I'm, I'm wanting, you know, you have an idea in your head and, and in the past with acrylics, you kind of get an idea of a timeline as to how long this painting is going to take you to, to start to finish. Uh, but with oils, it was a much more drawn out process. Uh, did I enjoy that? Probably not. Am I pleased with the results from my oil um, uh, portraits? Yeah, I am. I am. Whether or not they would look a lot different than if I'd done them in acrylics, I don't know. I don't know. But it might be something I go back to on my portraits. I've been thinking about it. But at the moment, yeah, I tend to use acrylics and watercolours. Never, no, never done anything watercolour-wise. But again, on one of one of my recent portraits, I did do it in a sketchier style and mixing the acrylics with water. So they were much more water based. And it, and it just it just made, um, I don't know, the brush a little bit freer flowing on, on the paper. So and it's kind of got a little bit more of a watercolor type look to it. Um, so, again, uh, but, but what's good about everything is that I know that um, while I'm still trying to find my particular style, I've got options that I can look at. I can look at oils. Um, I can maybe even look at watercolours. I could maybe, as we've talked about before, it's a nice day. It's going to be a nice weekend in, in, in England. I could maybe, you know, take my easel outside. And, and as you've, we've talked about today, and it might be that's not a bad idea if the weather's good. Let's go outside and try and sketch one of the houses across the road or, 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 you know, or something like that. So I'm very, very kind of open to trying different things. And that's, you know, that's how I got on to doing my portraits. It was, well, let's have a go at that. And, and, and you know, and, and, it's, and it's worked out well and I'm really pleased with the results. I don't know, maybe it's time to try something else. Let's talk about your most recent painting, Marlena. Yes, that's that's acrylic. Um, it uh, from a photograph, and the, you know, the 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 background in the photograph is very different to the background in the painting. Um, I, I uh, on on going to see um, going to visiting galleries and seeing a lot of um, portraits from the old masters, and with the colours kind of fading over time you get this wonderful uh, 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 dark bottle green black as a lot of the backgrounds on there are absolutely beautiful at setting the, uh, the person uh, against and bringing the person forward in the painting. So that's what I try to do with Marlena is to um, paint a, a, a dark background that is very very dark green almost black but it's it's actually dark green um if you if you're close enough to the painting and then to uh, again try and make her um stand out and come forward against that 
and painting yellow acrylic on almost black, um, it, it took a, a lot of coats of paint, a lot of coats of paint. And, it, it, to, and to be fair, I even think I could have done a few more coats on there to bring it out even more. Um, so that painting did take a little bit longer than how I would normally operate with my acrylics. But um, I think it was worth it. And again, working on different aspects and working on shadows and working on folds in, in clothing and those sorts of things, that's something that I still feel I can develop my art with and get better with. But certainly certain shadows um, in that painting, I, I got really well and I was really, really pleased. Um, and, and I actually did send a, a copy of the painting against the photograph to the person who the painting was of on Instagram. Unfortunately, they didn't reply to me, but I thought I would try just to throw it out there just to see if they, you know, would, would look at it and maybe throw back a comment, but they didn't. But, you know, hey, there we go. There we go. The women in your portraits are very modern, very contemporary. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I guess I see my, I guess certainly with my, with my abstract work and, and, and again, sort of going back to my initial learnings about um, abstract art and being shocked about how far back it was done in time, me thinking it was very, very modern. But I, I don't know. I see, I see my, um, I see see my art with the palette that I use and the bright colours that I use, quite a modern palette, I guess, quite an up-to-date palette. When you look back at a lot of paintings from the past, there are some colourful ones. I mean, Raphael using his, his, his greens and his, and his sort of deep reds and things like that. But there are a lot of paintings where the colours are not hugely to the fore. Maybe that's due to ageing. I'm not over these paintings, I'm not sure. But... But no, I, I view my sort of palette as being modern um, and I do work a lot from photographs um, and of course photography is relatively modern as well. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I guess they are and I, and I guess that's part of my style. And again, whether that will change um, and whether or not I come across an interesting kind of uh, focus or a situation of, um, of uh, females or males that are, you know, a little bit older. I don't know, but that, that's, that's, that's kind of where I am at the minute, and that's the reason why. The summer is here. And how do you plan to take advantage of summer? Um, w with, with summer in England, you have to try and take advantage of the, the nice days while they're here. I mean, it, it's, it's warm this weekend. Um, and uh, so it, it's trying to spend a bit of time outside because you don't often get that opportunity uh, in England. Um, and and uh, it, it's using the light. I mean, it's something that um, during lockdown, I mean, two years ago, the summer that we had here through um, April, May and June, when I was off of work, was fantastic. Um, the, the weather was incredible and... Um, we uh, unfortunately weren't allowed to spend a lot of time outside uh, with, with the government guidelines. Um, but fortunately, in the living area of my apartment, I have some double doors which open out onto um, like a Juliet balcony. Um, and that's kind of south, southwest facing, which in, um, in England is uh, for light and sun. It's the best direction to have an opening within your your um your house. So so that's that's often what I do is set up my easel there, so I'm getting the very best light that I possibly can. Um, but outside, as I say, the weather's so changeable here. Um, you know, the the one Thomas had mentioned before, the camera's getting blown away and being difficult to control, which kind of kind of puts you off a little bit with making the effort to log everything down and, and, and set it out and whatever. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the way in which I make use of the line. So right now, what are you working on? Well, right now, um, this is behind me, is what I'm just finishing off, and I will finish it off this weekend. Um, 
I have uh, an idea for working on um, another portrait and I am going to do this in a sketchier style as I did three or four portraits ago because um, uh, I really enjoyed it and really enjoyed the way that it looked and for me it's it's a challenge because doing it in that sketchier style it it battles it fights against my perfectionist tendencies um but i like that because um it, it, in life uh, having these perfectionist tendencies can be of benefit but a lot of the time it can kind of hold you back and frustrate you um with what you are doing whether that's art or, or anything else um so so yes so that's my plan going forward i will finish this this weekend uh, and then i'm going to be working on a portrait as in next week um you know sometimes my audiology job does take up a lot of time um and it's quite it's quite a tiring job because i'm just dealing with 15, 16, 17 different members of the public coming through with hearing aids and different things to do. And it can be quite a taxing day. So sometimes I'll get home and not feel like doing any art at all. And other times I'll come home and I'll, I'll, I'll set the easel up and do a bit more. Um, because, you know, as, as we will know, um, taking part in, and doing some art and, and kind of switching your brain off is, is, a great, is a great way to relax. So it's quite therapeutic as well, which for me is, is, is really important. How can people find you? Um, I have a, a website which is stuartcoxart.com. Um, I my uh, email address is stuartcoxart at hotmail.com. Uh, I'm also on Instagram as Stuart Cox Art, a Facebook as Stuart Cox Art, and uh, Twitter is Stuart Cox underscore art. Um, I'm quite active on Facebook and Instagram um, and through email. Not hugely active on Twitter, but I am there on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn as Stuart Cox art as well. So, um, so yes, and I mean, uh, my website, um, you know, you can view all my portraits, all of my abstract work. Uh, I try and regularly update it. I also do an art history page on there as well, uh, where I just talk about sort of different statues, different bits of art as well. So, you know, if anyone's got any ideas um, for that, they'd like to contact me, you know, just ways in which they've developed their, their websites. I'd be really pleased to hear from you because, you know, we're always trying to, trying to make things better, trying to make uh, things better to look at and more accessible. So, yeah, I would welcome, you know, any contact you know, would be great. You know, in the art world, we need to um, we need to work together. You know, we can. I think we can. Uh, I just think we can make it a better world. It's a fantastic thing to do. Being creative, creating something out of nothing. What an amazing thing to do! It's an amazing thing to do. It's been quite a journey for me, um, my art journey, and I still feel I'm relatively young with regards to. To, to art, you, you, you know, I haven't been painting for many years. I haven't um, been reading. Uh, I haven't gained anywhere near as much knowledge as I would like to. And it's a lot. It's like a lot of things, you know. If you had your time again, um, you know, would I get more involved in art? One hundred percent. You know, one hundred percent. But you know, life is as it is at the moment. So you just have to make the very best of of the situation that you are in and. And I'm really pleased that I've discovered it because it's been a fantastic outlet for me initially, but it's been a real interest and, it, and it's fun. It's fun, it's creating, as I just said, creating something out of nothing. It's amazing, it's amazing.